Okay, so we, um, we're we doing lesson four today, day one, all right, which be, begins on uh, page 49. Okay, so I am going to share my screen with you. Um, I have that page uh, 49 up from McGraw-Hill. And just a reminder from everyone, um, a reminder again that if you do find any links that do not work in the lesson plan, remember plan B, you can always go to McGraw Hill and open up the tray. Everybody sees my screen right now where you can open up the tray. Everything's there, okay? It's all there for you. So this is what page 49 looks like. Uh, it is uh, titled Particles in Matter. So we're going to talk about different types of matter today. Okay, and Jada, uh, Jada, you should have your camera on, please. And um, it always starts out with, you know, kind of a discussion thing like this, right? So four friends were talking about the particles that make up matter and give matter its properties. Okay, they each had different ideas. This is what they said. Joyce says, I think you can't see the particles that make up solids, liquids, and gases. They're too small to see. Harold says, I think you can see the particles that make up solids, liquids, and gases. Royce says, I think you can see the particles that make up solids and liquids, but you can't see the particles that make up gases. And Benito says, I think you can see the particles that make up solids, but you can't see the particles that make up liquids and gases okay who do you who do you agree with most and why Jalen, go ahead i agree with joyce okay and why um because the the particles like she said the particles are too small mm -hmm. okay okay and my sister's choice your sister is joyce okay that's cool uh, go ahead, Anson. I think Royce. Because, Royce? Yes, um, because, well, you can't see gases, but you, um, you can't see particles of gases, but you can see particles of solids and liquids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, Cedric, go ahead. What are you thinking? I think uh, Royce as well, maybe. Okay. And why do you say rice? Um, because you can see see water. You can't see gases that often, because most of the time they're too like thin to see mm -hmm. or small, or at least they're see through or something. You mm -hmm. can't see gases, so you mm -hmm. can't see water. Okay. I changed. I changed my mind. Uh, Joyce. Joyce? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Tenley. What are you thinking? I think it's, it's Her uh, Royce, I mean, because uh, you can see salt and liquids like water and um, pencil, but you can't see gases because they're too, the particles are too small to see. So I think he's right. Okay. All right, thank you. Go ahead, Jayla. Um, I changed my mind. I think it's Royce because when you pour water into a glass, you can kind of see it. Kind of, I think that's what that is. Okay, all right, go ahead, Anson. Um, the, I just want to add away the reason why I chose Royce because, well, you can see particles on your microscope. But you can't see particles of gases under microscope. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 And actually, I uh, go ahead, Cedric. Do you have another response? Oh, you need a microscope to see them, but they're too sure. Yeah, you can see them through a microscope, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that still doesn't mean like you can see them without one. Right. Which I believe is what they're uh, saying. Yeah. Um, yes, that's exactly what they're saying. Okay. We can obviously see the matter, right? We can see solids. We can see liquids and whatever. But what about the particles that make them up? Okay. For example, in water, can you see the hydrogen and oxygen that make it up? No. 
You can't, okay? Particles of matter are really too small to see, right? Uh, without ordinary magnification uh, tools, but it, it's the actual arrangement of those particles that give it its state of matter, okay? We can see the matter. We can see all the matter, right? Aside from, you know, gases. Um, but you can't see the particles that make them up, okay? So I, I think I agree with Joyce more as well. Okay, excellent discussion though. You had some great, great evidence um, and <clears throat> to back up why you thought that. All right, let's go on to, I think it's on page 50. Okay, on to page 50. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the phenomenon, okay, different forms in which matter can appear. Okay, so let's take a look at, I think we have a little simulation here. So this is ice melting. We all know what that looks like, right? Okay. Okay, so think about um, the photo of the ice melt and the video, right? Um, and obviously certain things would have a lot to do with that ice melting, right? Uh, what questions, um, what, what, what kind of thoughts do you have on that? Go ahead, Julie. Well, if you were like saying like how can the ice turn into gas if it can turn into a liquid? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Good questions. Okay, good. Go ahead, Tenley. I was thinking like that um, uh, in, stay, uh, in order to stay a cell, it needs to be a certain temperature. Mm -hmm. which is um 34 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, good, good. That's freezing temperature. But if it's above the temperature, it melts mm -hmm. into a liquid. But then um, I don't remember what temperature water boils at, but that temperature would, then the liquid would change to a gas. Yeah, good. Excellent. So temperature has a lot to do with it, right? A lot to do with it. Go ahead, Jayla. My, it says um if you have any questions yeah. um wondering what how does the how do you explain it how does the okay i just forgot sorry no you're fine we'll come back to you if you remember okay uh go okay. ahead anson but I agree with Kenley, um, because ice melts at 32 Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. and if and, and water freezes at 32 Fahrenheit or below 32 Fahrenheit, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where if it's over, it melts, mm -hmm. then it eventually boils at 212 Fahrenheit. Right, right. So, so water is kind of one of those awesome uh, states of matter, right? Because it can go in all different forms, states of matter, right? It can be a liquid, it can be a gas, it can be a solid, and it can go back and forth, right? It can go back and forth. So yeah, water is unique um, in that way. So let's take a look at this, the did you know? Did you know that there's a fourth state of matter called plasma? Did you know that? Some might have known that. Who knew? The sun and all the stars in the universe. Those are examples of matter that is made up of plasma. Go ahead, Anson. Yeah, but I kind of remembered that because I remember reading it. It was just on the tip of my tongue. I, okay. Or I just back in my mind. Awesome. Okay, good. So you already knew about plasma. Good. Okay, excellent. Okay, so... Um, the next thing, so so we said that, you know, with the ice melting and whatever, temperature has a lot to do with it, right? For sure. Go ahead, Jada. I just want to 
just say that my dad told me that in like second grade. I remember we were, we were looking at a big poster we made of the three. Um, mm -hmm. What are they called? The three states of matter. I forgot. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. And, and then my dad said, like, hey, there's, there's, there's one missing. There's one more. And we were like, what? And he told us about it. Yeah. Yeah. We don't always talk about that fourth state very much, do we? Go I've, ahead, Tenley. I've heard of plasma before, but I really do not know what it means. So what mm -hmm. is plasma? Um, let's, let's save that topic for a different time, okay? When we get into talking about the actual states of matter, we'll bring that up, okay? Yeah. Go ahead, Cedric. But I also heard of plasma. It's just I didn't know it was a, a state of matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, it also, sure is. Uh, if, uh, if um, stars are made of plasma, if I remember correctly, nuclear energy is kind of like mm -hmm. plasma. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that like something in the sun? Yeah, you're right. Definitely. We'll talk about that when we get to the states of matter. Okay. And we talk about those. We'll bring um we'll bring plasma into it. Okay. And discuss that a little bit as well. Okay. So uh let's get to our hands-on lab. Okay, it's on page 52. Okay, so open up your books to page 52. Okay, so what we're going to look at is different types of matter, okay, and how they can change, okay, or not change. Uh, let me see if I can bring up that lab as well. Go ahead, Saren. Can I go to the bathroom? Yep, you sure can. Okay, here's what it looks like. Okay, we're going to look at different, um, different types of matter. So, for example, think of a time that you were cutting paper. Okay, think of a time that you were cutting paper. Um, how did the paper change shape, for example? Go ahead, Julie. Well, I cut the paper and it turned into a snowflake. Okay, so it turned into a completely different shape. Yes. Probably a very beautiful looking piece of paper. I haven't made snowflakes in a long time. I think I'll do that this winter. Go ahead, Cedric. Um, it it could even be like like two uh equal uh roughly equal uh pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. Like okay. I can remember when I did that. Mm -hmm. It's just I don't remember when I did. Okay. So I do think I did do that. Okay, but it changed. It changed shape, right? Yeah, it yeah. just changes. It it's just changes shape. shape, okay? So think about uh, the video that we watched on the ice cube melting as well. What happened? Wh what about that one? How did that change? Go ahead, Julie. Um, It, it was a square, but then it turned into like a liquid, which is just like flat and it goes everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, so not only did it change its state of matter, it also changed shape. Okay. Cedric, did you have something to add to that? Um, uh, I don't think water really has a shape, but, um, it, uh, it also would, uh, it would also evaporate, be, uh, it would also evaporate over a bit of time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I true. already remember seeing some bits of water on the on the table that they were uh, filming the ice cube melting, and mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it might that those might have turned into a uh, vapor. Yep. So what you can say, and you're right, um, water does not have a shape. Right. But what we say about water is that water takes on the shape of the container it's in. Right. That's what happens with water. Unless, as we saw in the video, it melts and then it's just a big puddle of water. Right. Because it's not in a container, it just spreads out. 
and it's just a big blob of water, right? Until eventually it'll evaporate, okay? So this is what you need to focus on as we're looking at, you know, by this discussion or whatever, can we easily change the shape of different types of matter is what we're gonna look at in this lab. Can we easily change the shape of matter, okay? So everybody's got their books opened up to this, right? Okay, take a moment and jot down a sentence or two, uh, making your prediction, okay? And tenly, if you don't wanna write it down, you can just think it in your head, okay, that's fine. Um, make a prediction and jot it down in your book on page 52. Can we easily change the shape of different types of matter? Is it, uh, actually, hang on, I won't mind, I found it. Okay. I think like cutting, breaking, and melting. Okay. Okay. And you don't have to share your prediction. You can just write it in your book, okay, on page 52. What do you think? Can we easily change the shape of different types of matter. When you're done writing your prediction on page 52, then you can give me a green check mark. Or in Ten Lee's case, he's thought about it. That's good enough. Cedric, do you have a question? Can it just be like a simple thing? Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. Like saying yes? No, that's oh. no, no. No single answer. Give some details, in... okay? Can we easily change the shape of different types of matter? Yes, yes we can. Tell me. Yes doesn't tell me anything. I know. So I just put it. Elisheva, are you still writing? Yeah. So honestly, I just put in yes, we can't. I uh, I can't remember how long a sentence has to be. Because I forgot completely how long. Well, you kind of have to talk about yes, why? Why do you make that prediction? Um, Let's hear some examples to give you some ideas, Cedric, okay? Anyone want to share? Jayla, go ahead. Um. I said sometimes unless it is a solid made of plastic, unless it melts because of the temperature. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Go ahead, Julie. You can change the shape of matter because you can cut, cut it or you can melt it or break it. Okay, excellent. Good. Good, that's what I mean by giving details, okay? Now I wrote down something too. I put um, the shape of some types of matter, um, such as liquids or gases maybe, right? Um, can easily be changed, but not all. Solids are a little more difficult, right? A little more difficult to change. Okay, does that help Cedric for you? Okay, Saren, are you still writing? Okay, Cedric, are you still writing? Yeah, okay, we'll give you a second then to finish up.
All right, are we ready to continue? Okay, let's go on to station one, okay? This, this lab is set up as if we were gonna be in a regular classroom, right? So station one, Cedric, do you have a question? Not quite done. You can just continue. That's fine. Um, the rest of us will do uh, station one. Okay, if uh, those who have the supplies. So it says to draw air into our syringe. So I'm going to pull some air in. And then cover the opposite end with your fingers. So then cover it and then push. What do you notice? Oh, I had to release my finger on there for that air to get out, right? What did you notice? What could you say? Go ahead, Jayla. Um, I just did it and I was squeezing as hard as I can to get the rest of the air out. I tried to get it until, mm -hmm. until. Poop. <laughs> it released, didn't it? Yeah. So. So the plunger gets really hard to push down, right? Once you draw that air in and you cover the end, now the plunger is super hard to push. It's really hard. Is yours uh, difficult to push, Anson? Yeah. Lucy, did you find the same thing? Yeah. Go ahead, Tenley. I noticed that when I pushed, pushed it in, it was hard to push. But uh, since gas can like fill any space or shrink smaller, it was mm -hmm. easy for a little bit and then it got really hard at the end. Yep, absolutely. So it, it started out okay, but then all of a sudden it filled up and then it's like, whoa, I can't even push it anymore. Yeah, until you let your finger go, right? I'm okay, sorry. so I, I disconnected out of class. I don't know what we're doing now. We're doing uh, station one with the plunger. Oh, okay. okay. So uh, jot it down in, in your uh, book. There's going to be a discussion board for you to follow uh, or to respond on after this lab. So make sure you're writing down uh, as we talk about it. So the plunger gets harder to push down, right? As Tenley said, the, the space filled up very quickly, and then the plunger was really hard to push down. It's trying to push it back out. Mm-hmm. Do I have to do it all Anson, the way? Do you, Anson, do you have a question? Um, no, I just wanted to add a comment that it since um it's being compressed, it and once you release your finger, it kind of makes a noise yep. not coming out because so much air going through one space. Yes, and you're you're pushing so hard on it, it's forcing all that air out at one time, right? Making that nice little poof sound. Okay. I so. Also, um, I also tried pull air in at the same time and it was hard too but then oh, I, accidentally, I accidentally pulled the hard and it came apart <laughs> oh no so you yes. covered the end hole and then tried to oh yeah you're right yes. okay yes. It's, it's almost impossible i know to, to draw yeah. air in yeah that's oh. a great observation Tenley. yeah thanks for sharing that thanks also if you try to put the cap on too it's impossible it's impossible yeah great Okay, Anson, do you have a question or did you just leave your hand up? Okay, you just left your hand up. Okay. All right, everybody's got that jotted down. Good to go. Okay, uh, let's go on to station two. Cedric, Cedric is still writing. Okay, Cedric, go ahead. Finish up. I'm still on making the prediction thing. I was still writing that and then I couldn't write down the oval thing because I was finishing writing the uh, prediction. Okay, but you can remember what's happening, right? Okay, are you finished with the prediction, Cedric? Yeah, okay. So you know what happened with the plunger. Okay, with the um, the syringe. Uh, uh, we can't move it much. Right. 
Okay, now we're gonna take our sponge and we're gonna squeeze the sponge. Boop. I don't have a sponge, but I know that it's easy to squeeze a sponge. Yeah, totally. I don't have either. So I, Wait, I unless know. it's hard. Yeah, unless it's a hard sponge, but mine's like brand new, so it's really squashy. It's yeah, squishy. mine has a um, steel wool on the back of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just, I, I, I just uh, take took this out of the package. Yep, that's what I did too, Jaylee. Yeah, it's brand new. I don't usually have sponges around the house too, but but I do now. Okay, but so obviously, what's happening with the sponges? You can squeeze it into a way different shape, right? But watch when I release it. Oh, it's back to a rectangular sponge. Okay, so obviously with a sponge, you can easily change the shape of it very easily. And it goes back to its original shape. Okay, so jot that in your book for station two. <clears throat> What if like um, it would like you used it already and it's hard. Yeah, if you then then that would be different, and you would you know probably make note of that. But a typical sponge, you know, is okay. Yeah. Still is very pliable. If if it's very very used and you can't squeeze it at all, I don't know. Technically, my advice would be get a new sponge. <laughs> it's probably too used up, right? probably not doing what you really want it to do you have to get it wet exactly got to get it wet yep and if it still doesn't move yeah it's totally time for a new sponge <laughs> okay um let's go on to station three and if you're not done writing it's okay because you guys know what's happening right it's pretty easy okay number cube squeeze it between your fingers Look what's happening to the shape. Nothing, nothing. It's really, it's hard as a rock. I cannot squeeze it anywhere. So that's what you're gonna write down for the number cube. You can't change it at all. It's what rock it's solid. Made out of clay? <laughs> rock solid. A normal number cube <laughs> would be rock solid. <laughs> Yours is made out of clay, Jada? Okay, so you'd have to note that. I was joking. I just said, what if it's okay. made out of okay. clay? <laughs> okay. All right, everybody got that jotted down? Next up for the next station is the modeling clay. What color to choose? Hmm. I choose blue. Yeah, I'm gonna do blue too because I like I, blue. I just chose the one that I I got. And I I just picked. Oh, this feels really yucky. <laughs> yeah, I got the same stuff, Jayla, from school. Squeeze it. Okay, it's a little more difficult to change its shape, right? But you can. Not as easy as the sponge. And it's definitely not going to go back to its original shape all on its own. I would have to do this to it, right? Get it back into a nice little cylinder tube-like thing but it's still not gonna be exactly how it started, right? Oh, cute, Jada. <laughs> okay, so what would you write for uh, the modeling clay? Um, right, like it's the... bendy. It's bendy, yeah. Go ahead, right. Julie. You can make it different shapes. Uh-huh, you can. And I would note too that like when you um, when you like put your fingerprint, you can you can put little imprints in there, right? And they stay. 
right? You can, I think uh, Jada was poking her pencil in there and whatever. And yeah, <laughs> that's going to stay, right? Yeah, it's going to stay until you actually take it and reshape it. I feel like my fingers are all blue now. Hmm. Weird. So you definitely can, uh, the modeling clay has um, definite, you can make different shapes out of it. And um, when you squeeze it, it stays in that shape, right? Uh, when you squeeze it, you have to physically move it around to make whatever shape you want. Okay, but you can do it. Okay, got that jotted down in your book? Ugh, now my hands feel weird. All right, let's move on to the next, station three. Um, fill your beaker halfway with water. Mine's not quite halfway, but because I got the ginormous bigger beaker. Oh, so do you, Anson, okay. Yeah, this is the really big one. This one's a thousand milliliters, so it's really big. Um, and it says to pour some of the water from the beaker into the graduated cylinder. Okay, so notice it here. I don't have a beaker. That's okay. You can see what we're going to do. I have a graduated cylinder. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's okay. That works, Jayla. We'll get the idea. Okay, so what would you say about that? I would definitely make a comment about this type of matter. The fact that, and we said this before, water takes on the shape of the container. So the shape of it started out like this. But when I poured it into here, now the water shaped like this, like the cylinder. So that's what I would note on that one, okay? Water poured from here is in a different shape than when I poured it into here. It takes on the shape of the container. What do I do with the water now? Well, I have lots of plants in my office, so I plan to use my water to water my plants. <laughs> there you go. Instead of wasting wonder, it. You can also wonder, drink it if you're thirsty. Yeah, yeah, could do that. I wonder what would happen if you put put clay in the water. I wonder if it would float or not. What do you think would happen? Maybe float? I don't know. I think I'll see. That's a good, that's a great question. Okay. So let, let's test a couple different things. Okay. So make your clay like this. What do you think would happen if your clay was shaped like this? Go ahead, Julie. It would probably float. I would think it would float. Okay. I see you want? test it. I would Did think you, if it was like in like a solid shape, it would sink. But if it was in more like an elongated shape, it would float. Okay. Okay. Go I ahead, Anson. Were you going to say something? Okay. Who's going to try it? Okay, Jayla, did you put? I did. Happened? Now the now the water is going to change blue now. Oh, is it? <laughs> okay. Stunk right to the bottom. Thank you, Anson. Okay. Now, Tenley said, let's change the shape of that clay. It's like original form. You could test that. I'm going to do something else. I don't have any water next to me, though. Yeah, that's all right. 
Somebody turned theirs into uh, back to the way you took it out of the container and put it in. Maybe Anson will do that for us. It was just a blob, a little circle. <laughs> That's how it was. I'm going to make mine into a different type of shape. Not, I'll show not, quite, not quite the exact length of when, as when it was in the box, but close mm -hmm. enough. Okay. Go ahead, Cedric. Um, maybe if you uh made it a circle with the um with the center um without any clay, just kind of hollow center, it will float. Okay, perhaps. That's a good idea. I made mine into like a little bowl shape. What do you think is gonna happen? I made a bowl. Spiral. What do you think? I think I think it will probably float since it has enough air in it. Okay, I'm gonna see. It floats. This is called buoyancy. <laughs> okay, um, it kind of like that idea with a boat, right? Okay, uh, the bottom of the boat is shaped uh, such that it's displacing the water. Okay, so because I changed the shape of my clay, and we did two tests, right? The ball and then an elongated, elongated um, piece that Tenley suggested, they all sunk, right? But now my bowl shape, I'm displacing the water and it floats. Go ahead, Anson. Is your hand just left up from before? Um, I notice that if you look at it from the side, mm -hmm. it kind of looks bigger in the water. Yeah, a little magnified, does it? Yeah. Did you make yours into a bowl shape? I, I tried, but couldn't get exact. Yeah, you have to I'll get try. it. Yeah, you oh. got to get it perfect so that it's going to displace the water and float. I mean, I do have some water inside of my bowl because that's because of one of the sides is kind of a little bit lower than the others. Go ahead, Cedric. Did anyone try what I suggested? Uh, putting a circle and um, a space in the center of the clay. So yeah. just flat and then just a hole in the center? Um, No, like a spiel, but with ale in it. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, so make it into a ball, but then put a hole through it? Oh, uh, no, the center needs to be hollow. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Jayla, did you try that? Um, no, but... We could also make it into a square and put a hole in it. Mm -hmm. You could, yeah. Okay, um, and we're kind of getting off uh, task and whatever. So you can try a couple di uh, different things with your clay later if you want to. Um, but we kind of looked at three different ways that clearly, you know, two, two of the examples sunk. Uh, my bowl is still floating in my water, okay, because the water is displaced, okay? Let's go on down to... The last question here, okay, so you want to jot some answers in here because I think the discussion board is um, very similar to this. So did your results sub support your prediction? Thumbs up if it did. Mm -hmm. Okay, how was your prediction, how was your prediction not supported by what you observed? Anson, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to say one second. I'm going to get a paper towel and dry my hands. Okay. Jayla, what do you think? Um, well, for one, we didn't melt anything. It just... No. The, some of the materials didn't, didn't sh shape what I said sometimes, so... Okay. I gotcha. Okay. Okay, good, good. Anyone else? I 
I think my results, I based on my prediction or whatever, it really supported um, my prediction because I could easily um, change the shape of, you know, a couple of the things, the gas and the liquid, the gas being inside the syringe, right? Um, and we explored, you know, the different states of matter, okay, and how they behave, I guess. Um, so I think, I think we really did support our prediction for the most part, unless you are very specific about something melting and whatever. And of course, we didn't do all of that, but you can certainly do that on your own. Okay. Has everybody got everything written in they need? Okay. Excellent. All right. We're just going to wrap things up. I'm sorry we didn't get a stretch break in today, but we were just so into our lab. We just didn't have time. So we'll wrap things up so you can get out of here a little bit early. Okay. So that's what you need to do is go back to the discussion board then. Uh, when you click on the discussion board, remember it will ask you, you know, what um, to re to reply to the prompt that is up there. Okay, so that's what you will do for the discussion board. Um, the other thing that is on your lesson plan for today is to begin looking at your CER on page fifty five. Okay, so begin looking at that CER and um, you know start uh, making your claim with that CER, okay? And then we'll wrap things up by talking about what is on the calendar for tomorrow. So you know what to do uh, for tomorrow. Jayla, do you have a question? Go ahead. Will we be submitting our CERs? Um, I do not think this one is going to be uh, turned in. Let me just check really quick here. I don't think this one is turned in yet because I still feel like, you know, you guys are practicing your CERs because it's fairly new here. How much? Cedric, you're, uh, you're unmuted. Oh. Um, so you're kind of just practicing right now with the CERs, but eventually, yes, you will be handing in your CERs, okay? That's a good question. All right, so I'm going to share the screen with you for tomorrow's lesson plan. So everybody knows what to do for tomorrow. <clears throat> everybody see it okay? See it okay? All right. And I kind of switched things around because of the lab I wanted to do with you in class live today. So we did, we started lesson four. But tomorrow's activity is really just um, working on, if you can look at what we have here, it's actually lesson three, day five, okay? So um, so what you have to do is go to that activity for your STEM project after, after lesson three, okay? So uh, go to um, the STEM project and uh, where it says after lesson three, it's gonna tell you specifically what to do for, um, for the activity for lesson three, okay? Remember after each lesson, there's a little bit, a little piece um, of the STEM project that you are doing, okay? So um, follow up with that after lesson three uh, on the STEM project. And we're nearing the end, okay? Uh, for the STEM project. So um, I think after lesson four, this last lesson is our last lesson, and then you will be turning in the STEM project, okay? So make sure that you have been following along after each lesson, okay, um, on the work. Go ahead, Jayla. Didn't we already do pancakes? No, um, that that's an ongoing, it's been ongoing. The final STEM project is making your perfect pancake, yes. Do you have more questions about that, Jayla? No. Okay, all right. Um, does everybody know what to do then for tomorrow? Real simple, just uh, do the follow-up activity after lesson three for the STEM project. Okay, questions today, everybody good? Okay, all right, if you don't have any questions, great job today, everyone. See you tomorrow morning for math. Bye. Bye.
Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Wisconsin Virtual Learning is proud to offer an education that meets the individual needs of our students and families. Learn more about Wisconsin Virtual Learning or online schooling in general by visiting our website at wisconsinvl.net.